everyone, this is Gina. Today I am going to show you how to make this necklace and bracelet with the Enchanted Jewels treasure bag. However, this is a techniques video and it's a pretty unique technique. So it would be fun for you to watch and try it regardless if you have the bag or not. So what I have done is I began just making the necklace and then I decided towards the end of the video that I had just one of the crystals left from the bags so I decided to go ahead and put together a bracelet. I do it very quickly at the end just kind of show you my layout and how to end it but um, the bracelet is included in this design video. So what I want you to see is how I have made some clusters up front here. I just started getting creative and messing around and I think this turned out so pretty. It is a massive amount of bling, so you probably have to be a sparkle girl, but I really like this and I put it on and it's really pretty. It has kind of a Victorian or antique -y type feel to it with the antique copper findings and I think it turned out really pretty. So anyway, this is what we're going to do. So stay tuned, we'll go through the material list and get started. Okay, for this project today, we are going to be using some things from the Enchanted Jewels treasure bag. This is the May 2023 bag. However, these techniques can be used with things that are in your stash too. So you can watch this video and draw inspiration from it and still make something very pretty. So. I'm going to get a little creative and I'm going to do a little bit different type of um, stringing today. So I'm going to use three pieces and I've cut them 13 inches long of the Softflex fine beading wire. This needs to be fine in diameter so that you can put three strands through your beads. So this is the diameter of soft flex fine. You can use something other than soft flex, just make sure it's a small diameter. The diameter is 0, 1, 4 inches or 0.36 millimeter. So you'll want three pieces of something fine for your bead stringing wire and cut them 13 inches long. Then we're going to be using some size 2 crimp tubes and I'm using Beetalon in the copper color. Then from your treasure bag I've cut two pieces of the chain that was in the bag. You can use any chain you'd like and I've cut it about four inches long because I intend to make about an 18 to 19 inch necklace. So I've cut two pieces four inches long. And then I'm going to be using the crystals that are in the treasure bag. Now these are about 13 millimeters long I believe. Let's see if I can find them very quick on my list so I can tell you exactly what they are. They are 13 by 10 millimeter. So I thought these were the twist facet and I even listed them on as the twist facet. They are not, but they're similar in shape. I do have some twist faceted ones on my website. So if you want some, you can get some, but these are just a very large bicone. You can, of course, replace them with any larger crystal you, crystal you would like. We'll be using four of each of them, I believe. I'm kind of designing as I do this. I have an idea, but then we're going to use some of the 3x4 or 4x3 millimeter rondelle beads. These are lavender paint. We'll be using some of those. Those are in your treasure bag also, but I also have some in my store. And then these are 6x5 rondelles. And you can use a 6x4, that would be fine too, or a 6mm round, that will work just fine too. These are Rosaline color. Then <clears throat> we're going to be using some seed beads. I have out some 11Os and 8Os in bronze tone. And they are Toho, of course. And then I'm going to add to the treasure bag four jump rings and I have a heavier gauge antique copper tone jump ring. So this is probably about an 18 gauge jump ring. And they're four millimeter, maybe even five, just a smaller jump ring. Then we have 
this small toggle that is in the treasure bag, we'll be using that. You can use any clasping you would like. We're also going to be using this pendant that's in the treasure bag. Anything that you have for a pendant that has a large opening on the bale will work fine for this design. You may need to adjust how many seed beads we put underneath it, and you'll see that when we um, do the design, but you can use, I do have some of this type of pinch bale with a longer crystal on it in the store. However, you can use any pendant you would like that you can adapt to this design. Then I'm just going to add to the treasure bag four little antique copper looking beads. They have a wider hole. It's about a two to millimeter hole, maybe a 2.5, but this I'm going to use over my crimp tubes and then as an accent. And you can use just a crimp tube cover if you would like. You don't necessarily have to have any small beads, but if you have some small with a larger hole, that would work great. I just don't have any antique copper colored um, crimp tube or crimp covers right now, so I'm using that. And that is what we will be using. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. Okay, to start this project, we are going to put some seed beads onto the three strands of wire we cut and we're going to put center them. So what you'll need to do, and I recommend that you use Toho 8O's because they have a wider hole than most of the beads, the seed bead brands out there, and they work really well with this. So you will want to have a Toho 8O. We're going to, and I'm using, um, permanent finish bronze, I believe. So I'm going to get you in here close. You're going to take all three of your strands and put the ends together on one end as close as you can. And this is kind of a pain in the butt, I won't lie. But just kind of put your seed beads over all three of them and you want nine of them. So I'm just going to kind of bring them center and then I'll center them better as I do this. So I've just kind of brought it down and I'm going to go ahead and put nine of them on the beading wire. If you can hold the beading wire together really tightly, it works out really well. So I'm going to put nine of these on off camera and I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so as you can see, I have my nine beads on. Now, when they get on here, they're pretty tight and your wires can kind of twist in here. So what you're going to do is just get them on there and then um, put your ends together and you may have to move them just a couple at a time because moving all nine of them is kind of stiff. So just move a couple of a time at a time until you can get them somewhat centered here. So I'm going to push these together. Make sure my wires are not twisting so I can kind of straighten them out and um, just manipulate this to how I want it to look. And then I'm going to put it together again and see if I'm anywhere near center. So I need to move over just a little bit more. It doesn't have to be perfect. I We have cut enough wire to where if we have a little bit of discrepancy on one side or the other, it, it'll be okay. But we want to make sure that we get them on here. And some of the beads are a little tighter hold than others. So as you're putting them on, you may need to kind of cull through them and find some of them that slide a little easier than others, but generally they should work. Now I'm going to put my ends together again and see where I'm at. And that's somewhat better. Let me see. Now I'm a little too far over, so I'll just do this until I get to where I'm pretty close to the middle here. That isn't too bad. Maybe I'm just a little bit off-centered yet. Let's see. Yeah, that's close enough. You won't get it perfect, but you want it somewhere on, in the center. And um, let's see, it just seems to me that one side is a little bit longer than the other here. And I'm just gonna mess with it until I get it. Actually, it's it's okay, so. Let's just push these back together and then 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work on one side and I'm going to separate the three strands. Make sure that they're very nicely arranged. So I want my center one to be actually the center one and the two on either side to be actually those the way they're laying inside the beads. So as you can see, I have separated it to where they're coming out of the beads very nicely like this. And then we are going to put on to the two outside wires, we're going to put on two 11 seed beads. So I'm going to grab this outside wire and I'm going to put two 11 O's on and just drop it down. And then I'm going to go to the inside wire and put two 11 O's and drop it down. And then on the middle wire, I am going to put six 11 O's. So I'll just grab my 11 O's, my hands in your way, I don't know. But let me back off just a little here so you can actually see what I'm doing. And I've got three on there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to have six on that middle wire. Now you don't have to worry about them falling perfectly down yet. Just make sure that you have your wires in the proper alignment and the right amount of beads on either wire. Then I'm going to use two of my um, big crystals here and I'm going to put the Rosaline color on the outside and inside strand. So I'm just going to put one on this strand and one on this strand. And then I am going to put on these outside wires one 11 -0 seed bead on either on the outside of this big crystal here on the inside and outside strand and then I'm going to put a um, rondel the 4x3 rondel I'm going to put one on each strand and then I'm going to put six 11 -0 seed beads on each strand Okay, and then six more. Sorry, I know it's boring watching me pick up beads and I'm not the fastest at it, but I don't really try to be fast. I just try to be neat, so I apologize. Okay, so I've got, make sure I have the right amount. I have six 11 O's on each strand now. And then on the middle strand, I'm going to lift it up above the two rondel or the two crystals here. And I am going to pick up um, my large crystal in purple. And then I'm going to pick up three 11 O seed beads onto this. And I'm going to push them all down just towards those eight O's. Not so hard that you move the eight O's, but just push them together like this. And you can see now that this is going to cluster. So it doesn't have to be perfect just yet, but you want them down there and you want the purple um, strand with the seed beads above the um, peach ones. And then we are going to grab a rondelle and the bigger rondelle. So this is a six by five. You can use a six by four. And I'm just going to kind of trim my strands on this side. I'm going to pull them together and trim them so that they're the same length because I had the other end lined up perfectly. This end isn't really. So I'm just going to put these together and trim so that they're somewhat the same length. Just a little bit. Don't lose a lot of length doing that. And then I'm going to put all three of these strands through this rondelle. And I'm going to push the rondelle down and it's tight enough to where it will kind of hold everything in line for me. So now let me get you really close and you can see what this looks like. I'm just going to arrange all my seed beads. I can push these ados up tighter against that. Make sure that this is all laying really pretty. 
And then I'm going to pick up an 8 seed bead and slide it on all three of these strands. And this is the tough part because the little ends, they want to separate. And so it's hard to get your seed beads on perfectly. Sometimes it takes a minute. So then I've got this. And I'm just going to keep my strands to where I can see where my middle and my two outsides are. And then I am going to, just to keep everything in alignment, and then I'm going to grab a crimp tube. Oh, I should have opened these in advance. Yeah, that's hard to open. Oh, this guy is on there good. So I'm going to grab one of my size 2 crimp tubes. That one's weird. Let me get another one. Okay. And I'm going to slide it down all three strands again, too. So I'm going to try to put these ends together perfectly and slide this on. Let me back off now. I'm way, way, way too close. So let's put this on. And see, here's where you come into the three strands wanting to separate and just being a pain in the bottom. So if I can get two on there, then I can shove the other one in <laughs> like that. Whatever it takes. Just get it on there. And then I'm going to scoot it down to my piece. Again, I'm going to just keep reference where my middle and outside strands are. Keep them from being really um, crossed because we're going to need to maintain the, the middle one. We're going to cut off the two outsides. So actually having three this long is a little bit of a waste, but um, you can adjust that as you make yours. I'm just designing, so I want to give myself plenty of room. So what I'm doing now is I'm making sure all of my beads and everything are tight. There's no gaps between the 8-0s and the... Um, 11 O's. You might see a tiny bit, especially on mine since it's magnified, but it should really pretty much look all flush together. And then I'm going to pick up my crimping tool and I am going to use the second divot, the one closest to the um, handle, and I'm going to place it on that crimp tube. I'm going to kind of push my beads down as I do this because I can grab a hold of that crimp tube and put a little bit of pressure towards the beads so that I can keep everything tight and neat and then I'm going to squeeze. And now I have my first fold just like this. Then I'm going to use the first divot closest to the tip of the tool here and I'm going to place this tube, the two tubes that it created on either side, I'm going to place them touching the plier. So basically you're putting it in sideways, the, t the crimp tube, and then you're just going to squeeze. Now you have a really nice crimp. Because I want to slide a little bead over this, I'm just going to put it back into the tool and I'm just going to kind of go around and reduce and squeeze and shape that crimp tube so that I can get it small enough to go into my bead that I want to put over it. If you're going to use a crimp tube cover, then you'll be fine. Just make sure you have a nice size one that will fit over your size two crimp tube. Now I am going to separate my wires again and find the most central, the one that lays out straight the best, and I'm going to cut the other two off. So I'm going to grab my flush cutters and I'm going to get as close as I possibly can to that crimp tube. I'm going to kind of pull on the wire and push on my cutter so that I can get really close and cut that off. And then I'm going to cut the other one off, retaining the one that I've determined is the straightest and in the most center. Do the same thing, get as close as you can. I'm pulling on my wire and I'm pushing on my cutters and I'm cutting it as close to that crimp tube as I can. And now you cannot see any of the wire sticking out, just like that. That's pretty important for this design. And then, now that we've done this, we're going to build the other side. So we're going to go ahead and 
See, I got a little off center. I have a lot more wire on this side than I do on this side, which is going to kind of inhibit my crimping. So you want to make sure you get a little bit better centered. I must, must have pushed mine around a little bit more than I thought I did. But anyway, I'm going to make it work. So now I have this little cluster here. I'm going to pick up my bale and this is another kind of pain because the wires separate and um, go through the filigree on the bale. So I'm going to try to put them together the best I can and see if I can slide this through without too much headache. And if you have a lot of issues with it, you can put a little tape on the end, which I may have to do, so that you can get all of the wires through together because like I said, they separate and then they stick through the filigree. But I finally got it. So I've got all three of them through. And then I'm just going to slide it over the Ado seed beads we put in the center of the wire here. Let me back off a little here. And now you can see what I've got. And now we're going to do the exact same thing on this side that we did on this side. So separate out your wires find your central and your two side wires, kind of pull them apart so that you can reference them as you do this. Let me see, is that actually my center? That's actually, now, do, come on, you, okay, let's see. All right, so now I've got them, and I'll show you really close up so you can see, I've got them separated out pretty nicely. And then I am going to do the same exact thing. So two 11 O's on the outside here. And then two 11 O's on the, the other outside, or that's the inside one, the outside. So the two outside strands put two 11 O seed beads on. And then we're going to put six on the middle here. And I'm just going to continue building this exactly the same way I did the other side. So if you need to, you can just reference your other side or you can back up the video and do the stringing exactly the same way and then crimp off. And I will be back when I have finished the other side. Okay, so once you have your second side all put together just like you did your first side, it takes some manipulation to make sure that this side is tight up against. Now that this side is tight, you can move this side as much as you want over and adjust. So even if you have a little bit of space between this 11 and this um, 8 when you finish putting on your little cluster on your first side, you can then go in and push those 8 Ados over to the cluster that is finished and then when you put your second cluster on you can push it tight against this side and now we have a perfect cluster on both sides and there's no gaps you can't see any wires showing it looks really good on this one I am going to just keep adjusting it until I get it perfect because this is my last chance to adjust it I have gone ahead and put on my Rondell and my Ado and my crimp tube on this side. So at this point, I can just adjust this and make it pretty and I got oils all over it. And I also discovered I did I wasn't uncentered. I had put beads on this side, so of course it shortened the strands. So really, I'm still the same length on either side. So, duh, Gina. But yeah, once you put the beads on, it takes up space. So of course, this strand was shorter than this side after I did that side. So I'm okay. I was centered fine. Everything looks good. And I have as much wire on both sides to work with. And then once I have this all tightened up, again, I'm going to arrange my strands so they're not too gobbled up and make sure everything is tight. And then I'll go ahead and crimp this one just like I did the other side. So I am going to make sure that I am positioned on the second divot, I'm going to push the little crimp tube over as I do this, putting some pressure on the beads so that they stay together, and then I'm going to squeeze. Then I can just turn it over 
And now I will use the first divot on my crimping tool, place this crimp tube in here sideways, and squeeze. And now I have two nice little clusters. And since I'm using soft flex, I can kind of mess with the wires, make everything move the way I want it to move, and lay the way I want it to lay. So now when you pick it up, they may fall forward simply because they're heavy, but when you put it on the chest, this is going to lay out just fine. So then I am going to come in here and select my middle strand and cut off my other two. So let me straighten these out, see which strand I want to keep, cut off the other two, get your cutter as close as you can to that crimp tube, pull on the wire, and cut. And again, so I think I want to save there, well, I think I want that strand. So I'm going to, again, get as close as I possibly can. Be very careful not to cut your other strand and just trim that off, just like that. Now, what I have is a really funny looking little weird thing, but I am going to now work a little bit of beads here and then we will attach some chain to the back. Of course, you could cut your wires even longer and you could bead the whole thing. You don't necessarily have to add chain to the back. I just decided I wanted to do that. So what I'm going to do next is I am going to see if my little white hold bead will slide over this crimp tube. You could put a crimp tube cover on now and just start beading. You could just use another 8-0 on the other side once you see my design. You don't have to have these little beads. And sometimes I have to go through and pick out a few and make sure it's going to fit over. But that one fell straight over the crimp tube. So you can see it's just going to cover my crimp tube and be a part of my design. This one I didn't reduce so I'm going to reduce it a little bit by just putting it back in my crimp tool. Be careful of that seed bead underneath. I almost broke it. And just um, squeeze it down and reduce it a little bit so that now I'm going to see if this will slide over because you never know. You just don't know. And it did. So I'm good. Now I can rearrange everything and I'm going to show you the bead pattern on this side that I'm going to do and then we'll do the other side off um, camera and come back and crimp it all up. So let's see. I'm going to pick up one of my big purple beads and put it on and then I am going to use one more of these just to balance it out. So if you decided to use a crimp tube cover just put an 8 on, put your big crystal on, put another 8 on and work through that way. I'm going to drop another one of those down and then an 8 and then I'm going to use a 6x5 rondelle and then I'm going to use a 3x4 rondelle. These holes are hard for me to see, so it could take me a century, guys. And then I'm going to pick up three 11 O's. And then I'm going to pick up, um, I'll reverse this little grouping here, and I'll do a 3x4, but that one's weird, so. We do a three by four and then a six by five or yeah, six by five, five by six, I don't know. Put this on and then put this one on and then three more 11 O seed beads. And then I am going to do one more grouping opposite of the one I just did. So I'll put on the 6x5 and then a 3x4 and then a 6x5 and I'm going to call that good. So I've got about 5 inches from here to here. That's a nice span across your collarbone So for the a front of a necklace. So you could do a little longer if you want or a little shorter if you just want it to be 
a focal right in the middle. You could just do some plain beading. It's up to you. You can do it any way you want. But this is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to grab another crimp tube, which I should have left open because these are hard to open. But let me see if I can get this off. And we will crimp this side and add the chain. And then we can do the other side exactly the same way off camera. And these crimp tubes are arguing with me. I'm so sorry, people. Okay. So I'm going to grab one of these, and I'm not going to put that lid back on. And then watch, I'll spill it. Yes, that's, that's exactly what will happen. But I'm not even going to worry about a crimp tube cover on this. I'm just going to drop that down, and then I'm going to use one of my heavy gauge jump rings. A closed jump ring will work really good for this too, but I'm just going to make sure that this jump ring is closed very tightly, and then I will attach it to the necklace, and then I can attach my chain to it. Or, what I could do is go ahead and open this jump ring, put my chain on, which would be the smarter way to do it. So I'm going to just open this jump ring. I place the plier on either side of the opening, twist it open, and then I'm going to drop on my chain. And then I'm going to close it tightly, make sure that the closing is very flush. This is a heavy jump ring, so it shouldn't open again once I get it closed nicely. And then I am going to go through the jump ring with my beading wire, just like this, and bring it down to my crimp tube get you closer and then I am just going to go back into the crimp tube with the end of my beading wire here. I'm going to go through the first bead also. You don't have to. Some people hate that. Some people like it. I don't know. But I'm just going to go through the first bead and I'm just going to kind of push everything and pull until I get everything nice and positioned the way I want. You don't want a lot of movement on this because you're going to have the movement with your chain on um, the jump ring. So you can make this fairly tight. You want a little bit of movement though, so don't squeeze the jump ring to death. Make a little small loop with your beading chain around it. I'm coming out of the, um, the bead here, so I can cut this first, and then I can pull, I can pull this very tightly, actually. I am going to squeeze it to death. Pull it very tightly. We're going to use a little different method. I'm going to then cut this beading wire very close to that bead, and then I'm going to move it up just a little bit, give myself a little bit of room on this little loop here. That draws whatever's left of my beading wire up into that first bead, holds everything together for me, and then I can crimp my bead. So then we're going to, we've got it all held together, make sure there's no slack, because this is very important. And then we will place our crimp tool on here, imagining where the center of those two wires are and squeeze just like that. So now my wires are parallel in there because I just positioned the crimp tool directly in the center of those two wires. And then it folded in the, in the middle for me. Now I am going to go into the first divot and place that crimp tube sideways and squeeze again. And now I have a perfect crimp. And I have the end of my necklace. So all I have to do now is open a jump ring. And select which side I want for my clasping jump um, and drop it on there and then drop it on the chain. and close it nice and tightly. And then, I'll show you what it looks like. This is what I have. So 
So now I can just do the other side exactly the same way. I'll just reference the pattern I did on this side, go ahead and add my chain and my clasping, and I'll be back. You do the same, and we'll have a finished necklace. Okay, so here's my finished necklace and it turned out really pretty and it lays really nicely on the neck. I actually think I might shorten my chain just a little bit so it hangs even a little higher on my neck and that would spread this out a little bit more. It's hanging kind of down like this because I have it a little bit too long for my particular neck. But you can adjust the amount of chain you put on the back to have it lay however you would like on your throat and it lays perfectly and it's really pretty. So um, I hope you liked this and you try it and I think that I'm going to go ahead and use a few of the leftover beads to make a necklace design real quick just to give you a design idea so I'm going to string something up and show it to you and in detail and show you how to end it and we can make a matching bracelet so I'll be right back Okay, so I have put together a design idea for a bracelet using the leftover crystal that was from the necklace so that we have a somewhat matching necklace, or bracelet, excuse me, to the necklace because having one bead each left over isn't okay for earrings unless you like that kind of thing, but I'm kind of a matchy-matchy person, so I decided I would just throw together a very basic strung bracelet and then show you how to end it. I will pause on this so you can see the order of my beads and show you exactly what I used. So what I did use <clears throat> this time was the medium soft flex, so you can see the difference in diameter here. It's 0 0.019 and point inch and 0.48 millimeter. So this is a little bit bigger diameter. It's nicer for a bracelet. The beads that I'm using fit on it nicely, so I decided to use the medium. Of course, if all you have is the fine on hand, because that's what you have for this project, that's fine too. Use what you have. Now, what I did was I added to the treasure bag beads a couple of bigger kind of filigree bead caps. These are the antique copper color. They're more antique than copper color, but <laughs> there's two of those or four of those that I put on. And then I had some of these little tiny star shaped bead caps that I used also. I don't have any of these in my store and I don't have any to offer you. However, you can use any bead caps that you want. You'll want a smaller one and a little bit bigger one for the crystals. What I then did was I cut um, about 11 and a half inches of wire it's just so I have a lot to play with. You can cut a little less. I laid out a pattern and strung it so that it is right around six inches, maybe a little bit longer, so that I can get about a seven and a half inch bracelet. So what I have strung here is not quite six and a half inches. And that way, after I do my clasping, it'll take up about an inch, and I'll have around a seven, seven and a quarter bracelet, seven and a half inch bracelet. So, um, this is what I have, and I'm going to bring it in close so you can see the pattern. And basically, I just started in the center. You can lay your design out and just string it if you would like. Put a, a little clip on one end and just string it straight on. Or I started in the center and I just put on a three by four um, rondelle and then two six by five rondelles, two small bead caps, two big bead caps, and then my big crystals, another bead cap, a small bead cap, and then I went into the 6x5 with two 3x4s in between, and then a 6x5 bead cap, bead cap, and then I reversed it into smaller units. So I did a uh, 3x5, or excuse me, 3x4, 6x5, 3x4, bead cap, bead cap, 6x5, 3x4, 6x5. So basically, what I'm going to do so that you can see it and copy it if you would like or just string it any way that you want. Um, I'm just going to be silent for a second and you can pause on it, see the layout and copy it if you would like. Okay, so you should have been able to pause on that and um, 
get the layout. You can squeeze your screen open on your tablet or whatever and get very close and see exactly what I've put on here or just take the idea and do something similar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clasp off one end and I am going to go ahead and finish one end so you can see how I'm going to finish it. So I have these little rondelle type copper beads on here and I have decided that I want to add one on the other side of the clasping too, I think. That might give me too much length. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a bead or a crimp tube and then I am going to put on another bead. This can be a crystal, it can be whatever you'd like. It doesn't have to be a little copper bead, but I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to drop down my clasping. And then I'm going to go through both the clasp and the crimp tube. So, if, or the bead and the crimp tube, excuse me. So I'm gonna slide through this bead, then I'm going to slide through this crimp tube, and then I'm going to slide through the bead on the other side of it too. And I'm going to pull this down. And I'm going to pull it down to where there is no slack whatsoever against my clasping and my first bead. I'm going to make it very tight. And then I'm going to grab my crimping tool and um, let me get that. And I will crimp between these two beads. But first, I want to trim down this wire. See, this is going to hold everything because I've got it tight on here. It's going to hold everything for me. I'm going to cut this wire down and then I'm going to give myself a little bit more slack so that my clasp moves and that will draw the end of the wire I cut into the bead that it was right below. And then I'm going to situate my crimping tool between these two beads and I'm going to squeeze. So I've got it in the second divot and now I have made a little fold. You just have to position your your um, crimp tool according to the way the wires are going into the bead. So you can see that I have one side here and one side here. So when I place it, I try to imagine where the middle of those two wires would be, put my crimp tool there and squeeze. And that gives me kind of a, a parallel um, crimp. Both of my wires are in there and it's firm and it's tight. And then I am going to place it back on the crimp tube in the first divot sideways so that those two little tubes I created are touching the tool. And then I'm going to squeeze again. Let me do that one more time because it slipped. There we go. And now I have a really nice crimp. And I have my clasping on just like that. Now, on this other side, I can do basically the same thing. So I will just drop down my crimp tube. And then I have to grab another one of my little beadies because I don't have one out. Oh, come here, you little beady. And I will do the exact same thing on this side. So I have this bead, crimp tube, bead, and my uh, clasping. Then, of course, I can go through both the bead on top of the crimp tube, then the crimp tube, and then the bead underneath it. And on this end, you just have to make sure you don't have any slack. So you have to push your beads down, pull tight, position everything, Make sure you don't have any slack here so that you can do the same thing I did before. And then you just cut your, um, let me make sure that's tight. Cut this really close to the bead and then increase your loop around your clasping a little bit. That draws the end of that wire up. Place your crimping tool Imagine where the middle of those two wires are. And crimp. And then, again, place your tube. Ooh, it's just arguing with me. Place your tube in there. 
and sideways crimp it again. It wants to spin. Sorry guys, it's just spinning everywhere. So give me a second. You know, the struggle is real. And I don't pretend that it's not. So I'll leave this in. You can see that I am not any different than you are. So there we go. And that is my bracelet. And I will go ahead and put it on. But first I wanted to show you with the necklace. And what a pretty set that is. That's really pretty. I'll probably make a set of earrings, but this video is getting long, so um, that's what that looks like. And let me put the bracelet on so we can see what it looks like. I'll be right back. Here is the bracelet. And here is the clasping. And you can see just how pretty that is. That's just really pretty. It goes really good with the necklace. So anyway, that is the tutorial for today. Some design ideas and inspiration and something you can make with the treasure bag if you have one. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a like and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I would truly appreciate it. It does help my channel and it helps me to be able to make more tutorials for you. So if you would do that, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.